Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today I'm really excited because I finally get to do my third and final video for this series. And believe me, I've been waiting for this just as anxiously as you guys have been. So in my previous videos, we've tried putting the controller in different spots. We even took one apart to see if we could put better angles on the ball to see if we can get better tracking. We made a lot of progress and things went really well, but I still wanted more. I wanted to make it smaller, more lightweight, feel a lot more comfortable, and I also wanted to future-proof it for when virtual controller support came out for the PS Move service. Now if you missed those previous videos and you want to see how I came to these conclusions, I got a link to those videos in the top right of your screen right now, so check them out. So as promised, I still have my ping pong ball, I'm ready to get tracking it, now let's get to work. So let's take a look at all the parts we need for the build. First we need a battery holder with a standard 9 volt type battery connection on the end, a power lead for that with a barrel connector on the other end, we're going to need some spare wires, we need a resistor, this one I'm using is about 8 ohms, yours could be roughly in the same area but it uh, doesn't have to be exact. This is a 2 volt amber LED rated for 2.2 volts and 220 milliamps. I also have an SD card case here. I just ripped it apart and it seems like it's going to make for a good base. I have a regular toggle switch here to turn things on and off. Also a power plug for the barrel connector. I have a rubber band to hold things together. And a water bottle cap to use as a stand for the ping pong ball. And of course the ping pong ball. So let's start with the cap. The first thing we want to do is cut a couple slits down each side to hold the rubber band. Now that the slots are cut, the next thing we're going to have to do is drill some holes around the edges. These holes are going to act as vents, but also to run the wires as well. And you'll find out later on down the road, I decided to repurpose one of those holes. So now that the holes are drilled, I decided to wrap some electrical tape around the edge. This is going to make it fit in a little bit better with the black headset, but also provide a bit of stability too. Once that's wrapped up all nicely, grab my drill bit again and then start poking out the holes through the tape. Next grab the drill again and then drill a hole in the middle for the LED. Now that the hole's drilled, put the LED inside and make sure that it pokes through the hole. Once you're happy with that, we'll just put it off to the side. Next thing we'll do is cut the hole in the ping pong ball. Just cut a hole that's going to be big enough to sit on the base and have the LED stick into the middle of it. Next we'll grab a platform and a little power connector. Put a dab of glue on the platform and then stick the power connector down so the plug faces outwards and the pins face inwards. I ended up making a bit of a mess with the glue here so just don't do that. Next we'll put some more glue down on the base and then we'll take the toggle switch and then put it down on top of that with the switch facing outwards. While doing this make sure you also connect one of the contacts of the toggle switch to one of the pins on the power connector. Here's a closer look at what it looks like. So let's go ahead and solder those two pins together. Also be careful, it's pretty tight in there and you might end up melting the plastic a little bit like I did. Oh well, it doesn't hurt it. Next, I take a little piece of tape and my resistor and I roll the resistor up into a piece of tape. This will prevent any kind of shorting because we're going to have a lot of metal bits close to each other. A note about the resistor. I used an 8 ohm resistor because without it, my LED was getting way too hot. I experimented with a few and found that 8 ohms kept it cool to the touch after a few hours and it didn't seem to dim the light all that much. Depending on the LED you use and the voltage of battery you use, you might need to use something bigger or may not even need it at all. You're going to have to find that out on your own though. Once that's done, we'll grab the soldering iron again and then solder it to one of the contacts on the LED. After you're done the first one, flip it around and then solder your piece of wire to the other contact. Once those are both soldered on, take the LED, feed the wire and the resistor through one of the vent holes, then double check the LED still fits in the hole. If all looks good, go ahead and grab your glue gun again, put a few dabs of glue on the inside, and then put the LED back inside and hold it tight until the glue sets. Also try to make sure none of the glue gets stuck on the LED. Next we'll solder the resistor to the other end of the power connector. You'll need to be careful of polarity as you go. So make sure you check to make sure it's always correct as you go along. Then we'll solder the red wire to the second pin of the toggle switch. 
Once these are done, grab your battery pack and test it out to make sure everything's working just fine. Everything seems to be working the way it should. Go ahead and grab your glue gun again and we'll put some glue around the edge of the cap. Once you got a nice bead of glue on the cap, you can stick it to the platform. When sticking it to the platform, make sure you have those lines that you cut into the cap on either side of that platform. Now we'll just grab that rubber band and put it into one of the slits we put into the cap. Once that's secured in there, we'll put a line of glue across the rubber band and smooth that out. So now we're ready to get the ping pong ball going. So pick that up and we'll put another bead of glue around the hole. Then we'll pick up the rest of the platform and then we'll carefully put the ping pong ball over the LED to make sure the LED is fitting nicely in the hole without being covered up at all. And then we'll just give that a few moments to dry. Lastly, we'll finish off with a nice bead of glue around the base to make sure that ping pong ball is nice and sturdy. Now that we're all done, we can attach the bulb to the headset. Now you'll see that I decided not to use the second slit on the cap to hold the rubber band because it was way too much of a pain. So I grabbed a hard drive screw and glued it onto one of the vent holes. Now I can just wrap the rubber band around the strap and then hook it onto the screw. To finish things off, we just need to add a piece of velcro to the back of the headset and to the battery pack so we can mount it. Now press both pieces on firmly, then once it's stuck, connect the power wire to the bulb's power connector, and then one last final test, and success! So everything's working, it's secure, it's in the perfect spot, and super lightweight now. Let's just take a look at how much lighter it is then. As you may remember from my Vive vs Gear VR video, we weighed my headset at 582 grams with the modified controller attached to it. Now looking at the current setup, we're down to 531 grams. This is a weight reduction in 51 grams. Not to mention, the balance is way better now. Now let's see if we can get the PS Move service to track it. So to get things started, we'll select yellow as the controller to use for the head tracking, since the color of the LED is pretty close. Then we'll just hide the controller out of the way since we don't want the camera to actually track that controller anymore. Then we'll put the headset with the new bulb in the middle of the room and then run the color calibration on it. Again, be sure to calibrate each camera for that light and be sure to check it's always good in mask mode. Now that we've done all four cameras, we'll go to the test tracking to see how it works. As you can see, the new bulb is being tracked just fine with my two hand controllers. This looks real promising. The only last thing to do is to put it to a test, and I can't think of a better test than playing Space Pirate Trainer without any shields at all. So let's fire it up and see how we do. Well, it works. That's all I can say is it works, please. And I think I got a new winner. This thing feels fantastic too, so it feels really good. Don't even notice it up there. So there you have it. We successfully managed to get everything just fine. We lost a bunch of weight on the controller and we managed to give ourselves much better weight distribution as well. So I'm going to call this a massive success. Now I was honestly giving myself about a 50-50 chance that this was actually going to work, so I'm just as surprised as you are. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more content like this in the future. We'll see you next time.